In our lesson today, we're going to be taking a look at diagrams that are used to help us visualize geometry. Now, geometry has a lot to do with shapes, and in that, we can be taking a look at either two-dimensional or three-dimensional figures. Now, a lot of people, even though we live in a three-dimensional world, do have a bit of trouble conceptualizing exactly how things relate in a three-dimensional field. So these different diagrams we're going to take a look at help us to take items from that three-dimensional field and put them into a two-dimensional perspective that our minds are a little bit more accustomed to having to work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first up is what's called a net. A net is a two-dimensional diagram that can be folded <coughs> to make a three-dimensional figure. Now, in elementary school, a lot of times you're given a piece of paper with items with a figure on it. You cut it out, you fold it along the solid lines, and then you tape or glue items together and you make a three-dimensional figure. An example of that could be something as simple as this block set up here. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it is a six-sided figure. If we were to take this and cut it out on its external lines and then fold along the internal lines that are shown, we could construct a cube. Now this is one method for creating a net for a cube, but there are about half a dozen others, depending on where you place the sides in relation to each other. Now, if I were to fold this, because it is six-sided, the E would act as the top, the F as the bottom, the A and the C would be opposite sides, and the B and the D. So B and D would be our left and right, uh, respectively. A would be the back if we left C as the front. Um, dice that are used in a lot of board games are set up in a similar manner. So we have, or you have worked with nets in the past. Uh, we're just going to be taking a look at different types of nets and how to work with them. Now, this is good for just a basic figure, but what if we were to try and take a three-dimensional figure and create a net for it? So what if I were to take this box of graham crackers and try and convert it out into a net? You know, what did it look like before it got folded up into this in order to hold the materials inside? We're told that it's 20 centimeters tall, which is about 8 inches, 14 centimeters wide, and 6 centimeters deep. Okay, so what if we were to lay this out? Well, because it is a rectangular prism type figure, similar to what a cube is, <clears throat> it will look very much like our cube when we get everything put together. So what I will do is I will create a large central rectangle, which will act as what we would constitute as the front back, left, and right sides to this. Now, if we try and align it in a similar fashion to what our cube structure was, on the left, I'm going to have a very narrow piece. Then I will have the width of the front about twice as large as that. And then the left side, about the same uh, space as what the right was. And then the back, which is going to come out to about here. So this is extra. I didn't need that to begin with. And then we need to put on the top and bottom. Well, for ease, I'm just going to put the top and bottom in conjunction with my front panel. Okay. Now, if I want to label this for the dimensions that are provided, I would simply use the ones that are given. So the top and bottom are each six centimeters wide, and they would mate up when folded with the six centimeters of the left, no, sorry, of the right panel and the six centimeters of the left panel. The box itself is 20 centimeters tall. So I have the 20 there, and it would carry me all the way through a 20 here, 
and then each of those would be that same size. The front and back of the box reach 14 centimeters. So I'll place those top and bottom there, but also 14 for the back panel, giving it dimensions of 14 by 20. So I don't have to label every line. Of course, you can if you would like. But if this is 14 centimeters, then everything directly in line with it will also be 14. I do want to label this one because it is not immediately attached. It's up that visualization. The sixes here will fold together, and the sixes here, here, and here. And then the height everywhere is the same 20. We can go through and put congruence markers on this and help with that visualization a little bit more. So a net is one type of visualization, but there are others. Next, we have what is called an isometric drawing. And this shows a corner view of a three-dimensional figure. So you can see the front, top, and right sides all at the same time. And when we are done, we typically label the front and the right. So if I were to take this file uh, diagram of a filing cabinet and try to make an isometric drawing from it, the first thing I'm going to need is some isometric dot paper, which looks like this. It is a field of dots. In each given column or in each given row, the items are individually or uh, uniformly spaced, but between columns and rows, there is a difference. This is much uh, shorter in height than it is in width. And what that allows me to do, one, is to know if I have it in the right perspective. If you see it in such a way that it is taller than it is wide, you just have your paper turned at a 90 degree from what it should be. But from here, you notice that when I'm looking at this filing cabinet, the top has a shorter width, a uh, shorter height than it does have a width. So I can recreate that onto my isometric dot paper. If I want to do this, I'm going to pick a place to start from. Doing one cell is going to be a little bit small, so I'm going to connect a little bit larger. And that gives me the perspective of the top. Now, if I start coming straight down from those items, it will give me a little bit of a different perspective. Actually, let me open that up a bit more. And I will go out three spaces or four dots on my drawing. Then I want to end down here. So do that same spacing of the four, and then just drop my sides straight down and connect the center pieces. I now have a basic block that my filing cabinet would fit into. Um, I probably should have grabbed a little bit larger section of dot paper, but I'll make it work. Now on the front of my cabinet here there is a separation for the drawers so i'm going to select a location it's going to be a little off center but i'll put a line for the separation of my drawers then if i want to go even further i have the handles for those drawers so i can connect a few of the smaller items and i now have close to a copy representation of this isometric or of this filing cabinet into a perspective that I have. So where are my pieces? Well, on the top of the figure is the top of the figure. Where the drawers are is going to be my front. And where the solid side is, that is going to be my right. So when you're given this perspective, what from your view is on the right will be on the right. What's on your left, we typically make the front of our figure. Okay, So top, front, and right. We can practice this with another drawing. 
So we're going to make an isometric drawing of the cube structure that's shown. Now this one has a bit more moving parts or a bit more nooks and crannies than what our last one did. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I want to make sure I have room to show all three of these blocks. Now, knowing how things work, there's probably a fourth block buried underneath this one and back behind these two. But since I don't see it, I'm not going to draw it. When you are given tasks to do with isometric drawings, a lot of times I'll say, you know, assume that no extra blocks or no unseen blocks are present. Okay. So again, I'm going to grab a pen to do my drawing with. And I'll make it a little bit larger and see what I can do about matching some colors here. So trying to get this thing to fit on here. I am going to start with the top of my figure with the top block. And as much as I went out, I'm going to come down and I have an individual red block. Now to the right of that, I need to have a blue block. So I'm going to match that seam line and come out the same amount to create that same blue block and putting in all the sides helps me or all the edges helps me to see where that is. Then on the left, I have kind of a, a sea green colored one. So have the matching edges and then connecting out my figure. I end up with a close representation of the same figure in my work. Now, again, there's probably buried underneath here another block holding that reddish one up. So since I don't see it, I don't have to draw it in. So we have nets and we have isometric drawings. Next up is going to be what's called an orthographic. An orthographic drawing shows a set of two-dimensional perspectives of a three-dimensional figure. It shows the front, right, and top perspectives individually. So here I have an isometric drawing of some sort of cube figure. And I'm going to ask, you know, if I were hovering above this, looking straight down at it, and when I do that, I set it so that the front would be towards my feet and the right is on the right, what would this look like? Well, I can see that these sections line up, even though this one is taller, it still makes a straight line. And then I have this piece sticking out on its own. So if I were to try and recreate that, what I would end up with is something that is about three blocks tall. A little bit of a separation here in the front where that comes in and one block sitting off on its right. Because this is what it looks like from the top, I'm going to label this as top. We will come back to this top figure in just a second. Then if I were to stand in front of this object, let's say it was a building, and I want to see what does this look like from that perspective, I would have a section that was three units tall, and again, something hanging off on the right, but that part hanging off on the right is level with the bottom of my figure. So again, I'm going to have three sets tall and one sticking off on the side. I'm going to put a dotted line right here for the separation to show that there is more that sits behind it. Okay. And then what would it look like from the right hand side? So again, if I were standing over here, looking at the building, I would see some that was three units wide, three units tall on that left hand from my perspective, and this kind of jutting out towards me. So I'm going to have three units wide, one unit tall over here, but then on this side, something that is three units tall. And I do have a separation there for this piece 
that is sticking out on its own, I want to individualize that block. Okay. So between the right perspective, the front perspective, and the top perspective, I have recreated this figure. Now there is something additional that can be done, and it is what's called a foundation drawing, which simply says how tall each section is. Now the foundation drawing is added to the top figure and simply tells us how big each block stack is. This is one unit, this is one unit, this is one unit, and then this area is three units tall. So from that top perspective, if I, again, we're building a building, the taller a part is, the stronger the foundation needs to be at that area, simply to hold the weight. So from my top perspective, I add in the foundation numbers. This has to hold three units of weight, one, one, and one. So with all these different types of drawings, we can visualize what our figures look like and start moving from a three-dimensional and a two-dimensional world and allow them to interact with each other to give us perspectives. This is used quite a bit in construction. Blueprints are basically different types and perspectives of drawings, and you always have an artistic rendering of what a structure is going to look like, and that's pretty similar to our isometric drawing.